Welcome back everyone, Tina here and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can set up advanced filters and smart lists for workflows, not for context, but for workflows, yes. Now let's say you have a launch going and you have a trigger set for a specific workflow, let's say your evergreen workflow, contact created and every time a new contact gets created, these contacts go through a specific evergreen workflow. Now, since you're running a launch and you want the full focus to be on that particular launch only, you can also create the workflow with the trigger contact created so that all these contacts will only pay attention to this specific workflow, these specific emails are going out, right? But you want to stop the other ones from going out to not confuse the prospect. Now, but maybe you don't remember in which different workflows you have used that specific trigger contact created. So now you can filter through all your workflows and see all the workflows that have that specific trigger, for example. But you can filter via many more data points. So let me show you how you can do this. All right, first head over to automation on the left, then workflows at the top, and here you can see all your workflows. Now here you can see the new button, advanced filters, click on that. And on the right here, the advanced filters tab will show up. Now you can select the workflow name, the status, the trigger type, the action type, updated by, even tags created on or updated on. So you have many different opportunities, what kind of data point to filter by, okay? So let's stick with trigger type for now. Then you select is, is any off or exists let's keep it as is and then please select the trigger so in this case we want to go with contact created but you can go with all the triggers that are listed right here okay now you could keep it as that but you could add another filter you can add as many filters as you want by doing that you can either click add another filter or you can add a specific other condition to this first condition so if you click end if the trigger type is contact created and let's say the tag is five figure webinar waitlist, for example, then this could be your entire filter, right? But let's say you want to add another filter, which has nothing to do with the trigger type. Let's say you wanted to add an action type. Let's select that. The action type is, is any of or exists. Let's keep it as is. Add contact tag, right? So if there is any action type inside any workflow that is add a contact tag, then this particular workflow will be filtered into that particular smart list that we're going to create now. Now, so let's say this is our setup. So let's hit add. And here under this advanced filters button, you can see now we have three different filters added. Now here under the save button, you can click the drop down menu and you can either save these conditions as a smart smart list or discard the changes. So now to keep that customized view, let's save it as new smart list. We can give it a name. I would name it exactly what it is. Contact created and the label five figure webinar. If you forgot what you selected, you can click the drop down menu right here and can see again, what are my filters. Contact created, five figure webinar, and then action type is add contact tag, right? So let's X this out. Let's go back to save, save a smart list and add tag, okay? Now, once you've decided on a name, click on save as list. Ta-da! And here at the top, you can see this new tab showing up that wasn't there a second ago, that just got created. And if you click on that, you can see all the different workflows that include these three specific action. Contact created as a trigger, has the label five figure webinar and has the action add a tag, okay? Now you can also create a smart list from scratch without needing to put the filters first. So click on smart list and then let's say new smart list two, and then down here, advanced filters, then you can add your filters. Let's say trigger type is customer booked appointment, right? That's pretty common. And let's say created on is or exists. Let's keep it at is before the date, let's say before December. Okay. So we want to filter all the customer booked appointments before December. Hit add, and then you can rename your smart list and then you hit save bottom right or discard changes if you don't want to save it. But of course we want to save it right now. And here we go. There is the new smart list right here at the top. And now you can switch back and forth between those smart lists as well as between all the workflows as well, right? Now, how do you manage your smart lists? Click on customize list on the right. And then here you can either change the filters in case anything has changed. Or if you don't need that smart list anymore, you can just click delete lists. Hey, do you really want to delete it? Let's just hit delete. Boom. And then it's gone. Right now, what's again, the difference between a filter and a smart list? Well, the filters help you to narrow down a specific workflow based on the selected criteria. And the smart list is basically the save view for these selected criteria, which you can come back to on a later point. Now, if a user is creating a smart list, 
that user and the admins of the account are able to view the smart list, not fellow users. If an admin creates a smart list, only admins of the account can view the smart lists. If there is an existing user that then gets upgraded to be an admin, he or she can then see all the smart lists. And simultaneously, if there's an admin account getting downgraded to just a user, then only that user can see the smart list this particular user has created themselves. And that's it already. I hope you like this feature and I will see you in the next video.